Hey guys, welcome. Well, we're just gonna jump right in. We're gonna start here by the drift roses and then just kind of take you through the um, perennial bed. So thanks for joining me. No better place to start than right over here with the drift roses. Looking incredible. The color's almost Incandescent. They look red on camera, but they're actually just like a really, really hot pink, almost the color of a bougainvillea. And I've already planted up some creamy white and yellow lantana in the front. Um, and just bear with me, this is my plumeria tree that I just am not going to give up on. I'm determined that it's going to come back. I want you to see this beautiful clamaris. As we come around, this is the another amazing clematis. This is Nike Warsaw. Oh, just gorgeous. And I've got a few different varieties growing in here. I want you to take a look at this one. How cool is that? And then this really interesting variety of clematis. My spirea actually looks like it's going into another bloom. My phlox is filling in. Beautiful larkspur, look at that. Looks like every single one is gonna open up. I'm not sure I could get so lucky as that. And then next to that is white swan coneflower that I've got a drift up in here. Um, the one back there started to bloom already, but I've got, I think four. Those were going from seed a couple of years ago, so I'm actually surprised that they have gotten so big and spread. I can almost split this plant up, so I'm happy with the amount of growth they have. But next to it is always my favorite. That's the Midnight Masquerade Pinstamen. Isn't that gorgeous? Every year, I love it more and more. Bloom. If you see this, you've got to have it. It's incredible. And behind that is another penstemon. Let me see if I can get close to that bloom. And then when I'm, uh, I've got some ranunculus and anemones that are coming out of bloom. And back in the back, hidden back there, it's an invincible hydrangea. Kind of hidden back in with an andinas. And then here I've got my Peggy Martin Rose that is looking beautiful with this Orlea in front of this. Look at this flower. It is so beautiful. I really love to cut flowers and look at the stems, how long. This is just gonna be such a beautiful cut flower. So I think this is one I'm gonna try to grow from year to year. This was my first year growing it and I'm absolutely in love. I especially love it with the Peggy Martin behind it. And behind that, next to that, I've got a drift of yarrow coming in, some pink yarrow. Looks like it's about to explode. And then just for some evergreen cover, I do, excuse me, evergreen cover, I have some blue junipers that I form into balls up in here. That is a salvia back there. Don't see any blooms on that just yet. That is a phlox. Again, there's more yarrow back there starting to pop open with the blooms. And beautiful, beautiful oak leaf. Let me pan back over onto this side. Just for some beautiful contrast. We've got the Dusty Miller. This is cat mint. That it looks like it's about to start putting on some purple blooms and that's usually such a beautiful contrast but look at that sight I love it all 
All right, as we move through here, we have the beautiful super petunias. Next to my petunia is this um, chalk sticks. Is that cool looking? I love the texture next to the, the spiky grass here. So the Blackfoot daisies look amazing. These are Rebecca's. They look like they're spreading pretty quickly, which is great. Look at them. They're so full and happy. Onto the highlight. Beautiful. Magnificent oak tree. This is bearded tongue, I think it's called. Pretty cool looking. Some spiked white flowers. And I'm trying some hookeras again. So that is a Proven Winners variety. Oh, I forgot the name of it, but I'll post it on here. All my different hostas. That is a false hosta that I carried on airplanes, believe it or not from my friend Gail, but I had to cut it because it was damaged, but it seems to be doing okay. I'm not expecting a lot from it this season. Like I said, I cut it back, let its roots get established before it starts trying to perform. The hospice is starting to bloom. Some crepe myrtles here up front. And then the day lilies are starting to come in. And then in front of that is this gorgeous oriental Lily, look at the colors. So pretty. So, and then on this side is the Santalina, some more salvia, and then I've got the white lantana. It's got a little creamy yellow center, and I love, I love the touches of creamy yellow. More day lilies. My beautiful miniature rose. And then tucked back in there, I've got a Carex, some beautiful hostas way back. Aha, uh -huh. hydrangea back there. And then another huge, beautiful oak leaf that's busting out into the sidewalk, but I like it like that. I probably will have to cut it or stake it or pull it back towards the fence eventually. Look at the butterflies. They are loving these pollinator friendly plants. Gorgeous. And I'm hardening off some of my seeds back here. So that's what you see, but this is the new eclipse hydrangea. And I can already tell it is gorgeous. I'm in love. Uh, so we'll see how it does through the summer heat. It's in a perfect spot, but you know, just with the heat, it might be too much for it. So I've got some begonias still back there that I need to plant up. And I just pulled all these out of the greenhouse. Hopefully I can get these planted this week. Look at that hosta back there, how huge. I need to divide that up my oak leaf tree that I'm trying to form. I don't know why I'm doing that, just to see if I can, I guess. And then a quick scan over here, just some more catmint, some alliums, and just a beautiful view. And for those of you who gave suggestions on helping with the tree, I appreciate your suggestions so much. We um, decided to go ahead and anchor these poles into the ground. I think that came from Devin Bancliffe. So we appreciate that suggestion. That's kind of exactly what we needed. So hopefully that works. Um, but my rose tree is coming back. It's doing okay. I feel like the 
it's struggling a little bit, but it's still alive and that's what matters, so. All right, and then we'll be coming through my back gate. I've got my trellis here. And right here I have, um, it's a climbing rose. I'm about to put another climbing rose there just so I have a couple. I may even put a clematis. That way I just have blooming through the summer. Um, hostas and put some coleus in. On this side, my peony for the first time, we got a bloom out of there. I've got some echinacea coming up here. This is Candy Tough Mermaid Lavender. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the little bitty blooms. The purple skull cap is coming into bloom beautifully. Blanket flower, and look at my arrow. Isn't that gorgeous? And the curt myrtles are going to be a beautiful fuchsia color. There's a beautiful clematis back there hiding. Moonlight and Paris Rose. Unfortunately, one of my pink, my um, sexy Rexies turned into to this. I have a whole row of the beautiful Floribunda. I mean, the boom blooms are just incredible. It's got some Henry Dilberg in between each one. Look at the blue on this, how beautiful. So I ordered another one because I just can't have a row of sexy Rexies and then have this in the middle. Although it's beautiful, it's a beautiful plant. I'm gonna have to move it. I'll show you the roses from the other angle. Since the sun is over here, they're growing towards the sun. So there's nothing I can do about that, but they still look incredible. And that's uh, my cutting garden back there. And then there's a it's the Peggy garden. And I'm hoping all of this that's draping over will eventually just either fill in. And... Here's from another angle. Let me get a little bit closer. Okay, and in my cutting garden, I have some celosia these are floret florals and then i've got two types of zinnias unicorn and alpenglow and my snapdragons are still going strong and then here in the veggie garden i have some peppers brussels sprouts doing amazing look at the little brussels sprouts along the way and then some lettuce is coming up a little bit late on those but um potatoes we got a blackberry and here's our tomatoes got cucumbers over here here's a full, full view of my back path Lucy Lucy so this verbena is one is just an amazing this is an Enduroscape Burgundy Verbena, and it it is just a beautiful bloomer. And it's been in this pot for about three years now, and it just gives quite a show, and I love it. Look who's here for a visit. So in my pot here, I have, um, this is Blue Sky Super Tunia, and then I've got a pink Gerber Daisy uh, purple basil, some rosemary, and then that's a salvia back there. I love to put herbs in my landscape and in my pots. So, um, and then my, oh gosh, Santalina. I cannot 
remember what it is, but look, it's starting to flower. It makes a real pretty yellow flower. All right, so if we come around to the back, my snapdragons are all still in bloom over here, but my roses are beautiful. Look at that variety that this one, this is one of my favorites. Different color blooms. And if I can't remember the name, I'll just put it on the screen. The blue salvia. And I cut my petunias back already. They were just looking leggy really early. So this is the bubblegum petunia. It was full of blooms, but like I said, I just wanted it to be a little more full for the summer. So this is a good time to cut it back. That way you get a really big show when you want it. And then these are catmints. These are um, proven winners. Um, hardy hibiscus here. It's the same one. Can't remember which one it is, but my pods are looking fabulous. Got a white super bells, the dark potato vine, some dichondra falls, euphorbia. It's supposed to be white salvia. I love the little blues that pop off of there though. And then this is a wave. Petunia. Oh, look at that. Look what I caught in action. I'll have to come out here and take care of that. And I've got some Carex. This was one Carex. I went ahead and divided it into four just to have some ground cover in front of these uh, hardy hibiscus. They take over this area, so this ground cover will be pretty coming out from underneath. Um, I have some native purple skull cap in here. Um, my other one along the house was getting too big, so I just divided it, parsley. But I like to keep them a little neater, but they're just going wild right now. So this is all um, Texas natives here. This drift flowers starting to, or miss flower, I'm sorry. It's starting to make a few buds. And then I've got my hyacinth bean planted up all along the fence with the creeping jenny underneath it all along. All right, and then you come back this way, and my hydrangea is full of blooms, and I've got it supported now just because these blooms do get so heavy. Some variegated ones back there, and I need to back up here because I love the flower that the Nandina makes. Isn't that gorgeous? And then with the oak leaf right next to it. It's like a, so pretty. If you just ignore those, all those pots back there, right? Just pretend they're not there. And then look at my oak leaf, how beautiful. Let's go take a look a little bit closer at that blue. Isn't that beautiful? Right, my smoke bush, beautiful basket. Look with the oak leaf next to it. What a pretty combination. I'm trying to train an azalea into a tree back there. I do that a lot. I like to turn things into trees. So I obviously need to change that support and get it more upright. So calla lilies. And then I love the white alyssum along here. The fun thing about alyssum is it will reseed for you and it will come back year after year after year and give you the sweetest, lovely flowers. So this is all from reseeding and I usually just dig them up wherever they reseed themselves and put them where they need to go and they always take off and do well. And then I'll have another round of reseeding for next year. So these are rock rose abelias, rock stars, by the way, you should have some. And then I do have an elderberry back here that's been struggling. It's about three years old now. And um, I think it's just been establishing its roots. I'm hoping that it will take over this year and just kind of fill this space with that dark foliage. It is a very, very pretty tree. And it's a proven winner's variety. So my fingers are crossed. Now this viburnum um, didn't do much this year. We just got it last year, and again, I'm trying to train it into a multi-trunk tree. And then my spirea has some new blooms on it. 
just just here and there not not anything worth its show it already put on a show and I'll put that up here on video for you to see and then look at the beautiful hosta so this is all oregano here just a nice ground cover beautiful blue hosta here I love the contrast all right and then I did an update or I'm sorry a video earlier on my container garden so this will just be a quick run through of how the plants have progressed. Everything's just gotten nice and filled out. My leper plant's looking huge. It's in a pot back there, so I do bring that into the greenhouse in the winter. The clematis still has blooms on it. The blooms in the tree. So pretty. And then the double play doozy has blooms all over it. Everything looking really pretty right now. This has just been ideal weather. And the Belinda's dream has buds all over it. I think I definitely have thrips all around my garden. It's affecting the size of the roses. You can kind of see. They're very small compared to the way they should be. And then look at the buds. So I need to get out here and spray for thrips. I just use an insecticidal soap for that. And then the, um, the lemon thyme is starting to fill out. Love it, just dances in the wind. The moonlight and Pooh Paris Rose is so oh, beautiful. And then down here. Again, just everything looking so nice. And then I'll step back here and all my sedums are getting really huge really huge almost like the size of hydrangeas all right as i walk through here i have one more rose to show you it's a new rose i planted it last year but it's um i think america new dawn or new america climbing rose and it's just to take the place the colette is out of bloom and so this is the next one to bloom aside aside from the clematis so you can see it's starting to fill it out starting to train the the arms out and so I hope my next year this area will be full but you know I mentioned earlier about the alyssum reseeding itself this purple alyssum reseeds itself in my rock garden every year it's so cute oh yeah and I should say this is all basil that reseeds every year and it's just I can't get myself to pull it it's almost too much basil yeah. anyway it's a terrible problem to have right so all right well we've come full circle Hey guys, it's Dawn here. I just want to say a huge thank you to all of the new subscribers to my channel and all of those that chose to watch my last garden tour. I was blown away by the amount of views and I um, can't thank you enough. Also, I love all of your comments. They are um, very welcome. I do try to reply to everyone as best as I can. So if you want to leave a nice comment, please do. I'm not going to object to that. It helps show support and it helps my channel grow. So. And if you um, like the video, go ahead and press that like button. Make sure all your notifications on so you never miss another video. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. Hope to see you in the next one.